Okay. Who do we have? Who else we have? Judge, can I be heard? You certainly can. Beryl Yala, Thank how are you? you? Good, Judge. Good to see you. Good to see you. Sort of. <laughs> Under the judge, I'm before... here with Patricia Ripley. Um, judge, before we continue, Abby Rifkin, Assistant State Attorney, and I'm sorry to interrupt anybody, but um, I am new to this case and I am waiting on my co-counsel who is in a next of kin meeting. She will be here momentarily. I'm asking for everyone's indulgence on this case just for a few minutes. That's fine, Judge. Hold, hold on, folks. I didn't miss Rivera Yell. I apologize. I did not hear the name of your client. Patricia Ripley, Susie Ribeiro Ayala on her behalf. She's present, Judge, in Metro West. She's on page 39. That's on page 39, Your Honor. Page 39. Page 39. Okay. Your Honor, she also says she's going to need the assistance of a Spanish interpreter. She rather Correct, Judge. Okay. I have no problem waiting for Mr. Miglio, Judge. Thank we'll, you so much. I, it's just that she's got the historical knowledge of this case, and I don't. We'll need to uh, pass for her as well as for an interpreter. Okay. Thank That's you fine. so much. Okay. Uh, All right. Welcome, I see we have the interpreter. Yes, Your Honor. Good morning. Marta Castillo. Okay. And on Patricia Ripley, are we ready to proceed? Ms. Uh, Demeglio is signing on as we speak. There she is. I'm here, I apologize. El juez pregunta si en el caso de Patricia Brickley, estamos, Brickley. Brickley, estamos dispuestos a proseguir. La señorita Dimeglio ya está en la sala. Good morning. Let's swear the interpreter. Madam Interpreter, please raise your hand. Do you swear or affirm that you will well and faithfully interpret from Spanish to English, English to Spanish, the questions asked and the answers given to the best of your ability? Do you have such ability? I do, Marta Castillo, certified Spanish interpreter. Your Honor, are we to proceed simultaneously or consecutively? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Are we to proceed simultaneously, Your Honor, or consecutively? Simultaneously, if you can. Yes, of course, Your Honor. I haven't been assigned as the interpreter yet. Okay. Yeah, so she can speak to the defendant? Let's see if I can... Uh... Figure out how to do that. <laughs> of course, Your Honor. I also have instructions here. I can walk you through them. All right. Why don't you walk me through them then? <laughs> okay, Your Honor. So if you see, uh, you scroll down on Zoom. Well, first of all, are you on Zoom.com already? Is the account already set up for simultaneous? That's the first thing. I, I tell you, I don't know. You don't know. Okay. Uh, if there is a box on the bottom of your screen that says interpreter or assign interpreter, then we would find out if it is. Uh, there's not. I clicked on that. Nothing shows. Nothing says, shows. Oh, okay. So um, that means that you have not been assigned on the Zoom.com platform, uh, the interpretation mode. So at this point, you know, it's up to you, Your Honor. I can call my supervisor so she can help us out, or we can continue, we'll continue. We'll just be executive. That's okay. fine. Okay, Your Honor, no problem. All right. Um, let's Good morning. First. Good morning, Judge Susie Ribeiro Ayala on behalf of Patricia Ripley, who's present in Good Metro morning, West. Judge. Abby Rifkin, Assistant State Attorney, and Rebecca DiMeglio, Assistant State Attorney on behalf of the state of Florida. Just so the court is aware, um, Ms. DiMeglio has been on this case as, as Ms. Uh, Rivero Ayala um, since the inception. I was assigned this case last month. So, so with the court's permission, I'm going to cede to Meglio to provide the court with information that I cannot. And, and Judge, I also see... Mr. Christian Lake is here from Jack, and uh, this is with regard to the indigency issue. Yes, Your Honor. Señor Christian Lake está aquí presente con el, el círculo de abogados Jack del tribunal, eh, con, eh, eh, haciendo la petición para el estatus de indigencia. Yes, Your Honor. Christian Lake, Assistant General Counsel with the Justice Administrative Commission, appearing on behalf of the commission. 
Your Honor, just so the court is aware, I did send your JA, the defense motion for indigency and the state's response. It's my understanding that this was already ruled upon by Judge Johnson um, and that we were reset for report today regarding status. La Correct, señora Judge. abogada está reiterando que ya se pedió una petición para el estado de indigencia, que esto ya había sido determinado por el juez Johnson. Right. Judge, just just to give the court some background, uh, we had filed a, uh, a petition for indigency for costs. Judge Johnson had granted that and uh, at, without a hearing. At that time, uh, Ms. Levine objected, Mr. Lake objected, and Judge Johnson reversed his decision and found that Ms. Ripley was not indigent for costs based upon a um, an expectation of future earnings. Entonces la abogada quiere However, reiterar que la petición um, para el estado de indigencia se había eh, que, eh, dictaminado por el juez Johnson sin una audiencia. La señora Levan y la, señor, la otra abogada eh, eh, habían estipulado esto, pero el juez cambió de opinión y basado en los eh, ingresos futuros, entonces por eso eh, se reversó, se cambió esta estipulación. Your Honor, just to address that issue, I think to, to be more clear on this is we had a very lengthy evidentiary hearing on this issue. The, and so the only factor that has allegedly changed, and we're not taking any position one way or the other on this, is the issue of the out-of-country property. All the other facts, I believe, remain the same. However, Ms. Ripley's attorneys, I believe, now have additional information regarding the value of the property located in the Dominican Republic that they wanted to present to the court as a basis for reconsideration on the motion for indigency on that the value based on information they've subsequently obtained has significantly reduced or eliminated the value of that out of country asset. That was the- sí, El abogado reitera, el señor Lake reitera que hubo una audiencia bastante larga para determinar ciertos factores. El problema había sido eh, que habían unas propiedades fuera del país, eh, pero ahora se ha determinado que basado en el valor de esas propiedades que realmente estaban localizadas en eh, la República Dominicana, eh, ahora se han eh, cambiado estas peticiones y el estatus de indigente también ha cambiado basado en, en eso. And Judge, just uh, my understanding from Ms. Levine before she left uh, at the end of last month for her retirement was that uh, Ms. Ayala was going to provide any documents that showed any change in circumstances in advance of today's hearing if any documents did exist. And I, we have not received any. Um, so it's the state's position that the motion was ruled on and there's nothing before the court as far as indigent indigency now we haven't received a new motion or any new documents entonces eh, en su señoría dice la abogada la señorita la vine antes de que ya se retirara el mes pasado eh, la señorita Ayala estaba supuesta a proveer unos documentos cambiando las circunstancias o demostrando que hay un cambio pero hasta este momento la fiscalía no ha recibido ningún tipo de documento y entonces estipulamos que hasta este punto eh, esta decisión que se ha tomado eh, de indigencia no se puede comprobar por estos motivos o la moción no está estipulada Judge, I want to be very clear uh, about this issue. This property located in the Dominican Republic is not even in Ms. Ripley's name. This property is still in her grandfather's name and her grandfather is deceased. It would then pass to her mother who is also deceased and Ms. Ripley is in the line of succession now. This is a property that was taken over by the Dominican Republic's government in an eminent domain proceeding. We are waiting to see how much the Dominican Republic is willing to pay for the land and when they are willing to pay it. Because of COVID- I'm sorry, I'm um, sorry, on our interpret hasn't oh, been sorry. given an opportunity to interpret. I apologize. Thank you. Señor, su señoría, quiero hacer esto muy claro. Este tema con la propiedad que está localizada en, eh, la, en Santo Domingo, en la, en la República Dominicana, 
es, no está a nombre de la señorita Repley, este está, no, estaba a nombre del abuelo de la señorita, el cual ya ha fallecido, y después pasó al, a la madre de la señorita, la que también ha fallecido. Estos, eh, estas propiedades fueron tomadas por una toma directa por el gobierno, y en este momento estamos esperando a ver si el gobierno está dispuesto a vender estas propiedades. Thank you. The family has had a private appraisal done. The government's appraisal is very different in terms of what they're willing to pay. And that's still a negotiation. So there's no money there at all. Right now, Ms. Ripley has no access to money. In a case where the state is seeking the death penalty, I have been unable to take any depositions. I've been unable to obtain experts. She is basically without a defense. Now, I don't have a problem waiting for my fees. Mr. Rabin has also been paid some fees, and those have been minimal. But nonetheless, Judge, Ms. Rifkin and I spoke yesterday. I'm sorry. I'm and sorry. I'm hoping that we can reach. I'm sorry. Eh, entonces, su señoría, dice la abogada, esta evaluación ha sido, esta propiedad ha sido evaluada por un evaluador eh, privado y también el, un evaluador gubernamental, el cual ha dado una evaluación mucho más baja de lo que era. Eh, este caso realmente está, la fiscalía está buscando la pena de muerte. La señora Ripley no tiene ningunos fondos. Yo no he tenido acceso a ninguna declaración jurada, no he tenido acceso a ningún perito. Realmente la señora Ripley en este momento no tiene ningún tipo de defensa. Eh, nos, yo, nosotros estamos dispuestos con el señor Raven eh, a eh, mis ingresos pues son mínimos en este momento pero ya he hablado con el señor Raven y estamos dispuestos a continuar de esto de esta manera and judge obviously uh, the state disagrees with some of the representations but I don't know if you if we're going to be rehearing that issue now or if we just want to wait for the documents that Miss Ayala is expecting and maybe we'll have more clarity because The last information that was provided to the state from shows an October 13th, 2019 appraisal naming Miss Ripley's share of the property $687,500. She has a home with her husband that's in both of their names worth over $400,000 in Kendall. Um, there, you know, we've already litigated significantly on this issue. So unless there's anything new, the state would just ask that we be provided that information and that maybe we can review and address it when it's more Right. Su señoría, eh, reiterando nuevamente, eh, digo que nosotros podemos esperar por algunos los documentos que la señora ya la pueda darnos. La última inform información que tenemos de la, fe de la fecha del 13 de octubre era eh, una cantidad de dinero de 687.500, que fue lo que evaluaron las propiedades, más una casa que eh, la acusada comparte con su esposo, localizada en Kendall, eh, de 400 mil dólares. Eh, entonces, estamos, eh, hasta este momento no hemos recibido nada nuevo. A Además de esto. And Your Honor, the JC would agree that this should be deferred until we have more information on the value of the property and how much Ms. Uh, Ripley is likely to receive, because the issue here is if she receives a substantial amount of money, she's not indigent. And that's Don't. the problem. Entonces, Entonces, let's, let's interpret, go ahead. Thank you. Entonces el señor al abogado le está diciendo que esto realmente tiene que ser deferido hasta obtener más información porque eh, si el valor eh, de estas propiedades pues es más eh, para la señora Ripley y que es una cantidad sustanciosamente más alta, entonces realmente la señora Ripley pues, no sería una persona indigente. Mr. Barrow Yala, let me ask you, when did the eminent domain proceedings begin in the public? In the 1970s. <laughs> That's when the property was taken over. Um, and it's only now that people are just starting to be able to recover the properties. The difference between the private valuation and the valuation done by the government is substantial. The private valuation was at $25 per hectare uh, and the government's evaluation is at 10 cents per each hectare. 
So, there's a substantial la, expropiación, difference. la expropiación ocurrió en los 1970. La expropiación, pues, esto fue hace much, uh, muchísimo tiempo. El valor, la, la, el valor que dio eh, la persona que estaba eh, evaluando esta propiedad de manera privada fueron 25 dólares por hectárea, pero la evaluación gubernamental fueron 10 centavos por hectárea. Es una cantidad y una diferencia sustancial. No, nonetheless, Judge, uh, Ms. Ripken and I have spoken. Uh, I hope to meet with her and Mr. Lake and Ms. DiMeglio, go over all the documents. Um, the likelihood of Ms. Ripley receiving this property in time to make a difference for us for purposes of the defense is, it, it's just very tenuous, Judge. And with regard to the property that she owns with her husband, there's very little equity in that as well. So bottom line is, I think we need a reset on this. I'm hoping to meet with all the parties and coming up with some kind of solution, including Jack uh, having a judgment against Miss Ripley uh, for, for any monies that, that, um, that are expended on her defense. But to leave her without any defense is just unacceptable. Entonces, en ese momento, uh, Miss Ayala is correct. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hold on. Estoy sorry. dispuesta a eh, comunicarme con todos los abogados en, en el caso, con el señor Ley, con la señora De Mayo, con la señora Rifkin. Eh, la diferencia pues de este de esta cantidad de dinero es sustanciosa eh, la eh, en, re, eh, en referencia de la propiedad que ella es dueña con su esposo en Kendall hay muy poco eh, valor en, de la casa en este momento entonces eh, en este momento estamos eh, dispuestos a que se haga un fallo en contra eh, de la señora eh, Ripley eh, hasta que eh, entonces tengamos lleguemos a un acuerdo eh, con los abogados del Jack uh, Okay, um, Ms. Ayala is correct. We did speak yesterday on the phone. Um, we had a lengthy conversation and I told her that because I was the new kid on the block, it, I mean, I did not have the amount of information that everyone else did. However, um, it is my obligation to always look at things that are, that is provide, that are provided to me to make that determination. And um, I did not think that there was anything that was going to change. However, it is my obligation and I would be more than happy to listen um, and look at whatever documents she would like us to look at. Como si yo reitero que sí, yo hablé con la señorita Ayala, tuve una conversación muy larga con ella por teléfono ayer. Yo soy la persona nueva que está entrando en, en este caso. Realmente no tengo tal vez toda la información que todo el mundo tiene, pero es mi responsabilidad de determinar de manera prudente eh, y volver a eh, pensar si hay algún eh, cambio. Es mi responsabilidad de mirar a cualquier otro documento pertinente. Your Honor, uh, as far as some sort of negotiated result, that is not something the JAC is in a position to do. Ultimately, it's going to be your decision based on whatever additional information that is provided to make the call whether the defendant is indigent for cost or not. It's not something, there is no intermediate step for us because we're not in that position <laughs> the court who has to make the determine that the presumption of non-indigency is rebutted. And so it's, it really is not it's something that can be negotiated. Now, we're happy to look at whatever is provided and provide comment, but ultimately it would be your call to decide whether the defendant would be indigent for cost. So, señoría, no es eh, los abogados del JC que tengan que hacer esta decisión final basado en la información. Nosotros no tenemos un término medio. Realmente, eh, a la final, es la decisión de su señoría eh, de determinar la eh, presunción de la indigencia. Eh, y yo estoy eh, dispuesto a mirar cualquier otro documento, pero quiero asegurarme que la decisión final eh, está en su señoría. All right, this is what I'm going to do. Um going to continue uh, this motion. And with three week, a three week reset be sufficient time, Mr. Barrow Yala, for you to get together with Rifkin and Mr. Lake? Yes, Judge. Entonces, esto es lo que yo voy a hacer, dice el juez. Voy a hacer un aplazamiento para continuar con esta petición. La juez le pregunta a la abogada Rivero Ayala si tres semanas del día de hoy serían suficientes para que ella prepare todo lo de su caso. La abogada responde que sí. 
Your Honor, I'm going to be out of town next week, hopefully. Um, so if the court could reset it for maybe 30 days rather than three weeks, I would appreciate it. La abogada Rifkin va a estar fuera del estado la próxima semana. Ya está pidiendo que por favor se pueda restablecer para 30 semanas para volver a programar. 30 right. días, perdón. Let's February, February 18th on Thursday. That'll be Thursday. This will be in front of me. Entonces eh, dice el asistente judicial que oh. sería para febrero 18 o oh. My pod day is going to be on Thursday. So that, that's the, the Thursday, correct? February 18th? Yeah, yeah. So you so want to a, transfer that case to your division now? No, you don't transfer it now because my division hasn't uh, been put up yet. Okay. So um, it'll be February 18th, but I'll be hearing it. Will I'm that be pod two, Judge? I'm sorry? Is that pod two? That's pod two. Okay. Yes. Se confirma que es la fecha del febrero 18, este día es un jueves, eh, le pregunta al asistente judicial si hay que cambiar el caso a otra división, el juez le dice a su asistente que no, que se va a quedar en la misma división que está, y se confirma que es en la esfera o el pod número 2 el 18 de febrero. Okay. Um, two things, let me just uh, address. First of all, we did provide the court with the um, defense motion and the state's response. I don't know if the court had the opportunity to read it. Um, we didn't know if you had the opportunity while you're sitting in the courtroom to actually see what was in the court file. Entonces el juez dice que él no sabe seguramente si esto va a estar localizado en, la, en el PAD 2 o la esfera 2, pero que por favor averigüen con el asistente judicial primero para confirmar. La abogada Rifkin tiene dos cosas que añadir. Número uno, ellos eh, recibieron eh, los documentos, está asegurando y confirmando que el juez tuvo la oportunidad de leer las peticiones acordadas, a ver si él las revisó. And the other thing that I wanted to address to the court was, and, um, and to counsel, This valuation from the Dominican Republic, as the new kid, I don't know if we have it in our file. We don't really have access to the physical files. I only have access to what's online. If it hasn't been provided, do you think that we could get it um, before we all meet together? La abogada Rifkin está añadiendo que en, re, en referencia a la propiedad de Santo Domingo, como yo soy la persona nueva, dice la abogada, yo no tengo acceso sino a lo que está solamente en línea, no tengo acceso a las cosas que están físicamente en el expediente. Si es posible, por favor, de antes de, eh, de hacer la audiencia próxima, que ella pueda recibir estos documentos. And Judge, what I'll do is I'll set up a meeting and if we can come to some sort of an agreement, we'll put it back before uh, this court to ratify whatever agreement we reach in case we do. That's La abogada dice que ella eh, realmente quiere hacer una reunión para llegar a ver si llegan a algún tipo de acuerdo y si, si esto se puede concibir, llegar a un acuerdo, entonces que ella le informa al tribunal. And if the court is aware, it was ruled upon um, in July of 2020. So Judge Johnson already denied it. Um, so this would be just um, re reviewing Judge Johnson's ruling. Well, he para granted que todo el mundo it. tenga eh, la capacidad y esté informado, el juez eh, Johnson, el 20 de julio, él ya lo denegó. Entonces, esta audiencia simplemente es como para revisar eh, el, la, lo que el, el juez Johnson dictaminó. Oh, Ms. Griffin, that's I don't that's know correct, about, Judge. He, he, I don't know about reviewing Judge Johnson's order. I think I need to look at what's being presented now in the context of what Judge Johnson ordered. Realmente lo que no quiere hacer es revisar la orden del juez Johnson. Simplemente lo que quiere hacer es revisar el contexto que ha sido presentada esta orden. And just to be accurate, Judge Johnson granted it without a hearing, then denied it with a hearing, and now we're we're here to be able to present new evidence, and I'll meet with the appropriate parties and and see if we can come up with something that is acceptable. To all parties. Solamente para la veracidad, el juez eh, Johnson lo otorgó, después lo denegó con una audiencia, porque la manera de otorgarlo fue sin audiencia, lo denegó con una audiencia y ahora lo que estamos es que vamos a revisar las nuevas pruebas, a revisarlo con todas las partes involucradas eh, para ver si llegamos a algo aceptable. Your Honor, I just want to reiterate, that's not an option. There's no point in a meeting between JAC and 
defense team on this issue because we cannot come to some sort of understanding or an agreement. They have I, to determine. Say, Su so, señoría, esto para que quiero reiterar, dice el abogado Christian Lake, que esto no es una opción, que eh, no puede ser que los abogados de JC de la defensa puedan llegar a una a un acuerdo, un entendimiento eh, entre todos ellos, porque esto no es una opción para ellos en este momento. Well, That's not accurate, Judge. Well, I've, I've seen cases and the Jack rules themselves provide for a judgment uh, in, in lieu of um in lieu of straight payment um nonetheless i mean i don't know if mr lake wants to see uh miss ripley go forward without any defense at all certainly it's going to come back to bite everybody so i think it would behoove everybody and it would be in everybody's best interest to meet and resolve the issue and if mr lake would just look at the jack rules again and see that there is in fact uh place for a resolution which comes in the form of a judgment because that's the jack rules su señoría eso no es veraz eh, si le pido al señor eh, ley que por favor revise las re, los reglamentos del grupo de abogados del jack del tribunal eh, porque esto no está en las reg en los reglamentos de este first john or jc has no rules like this second I, i'm not finished i'm I'll let the interpreter go Lo bueno, primero que todo, en estos reglamentos no existen de esta manera. Segundo, bueno, yo voy a permitir que la interprete siga interpretando. Second, the provision that is being referred to is the provision that provides that if a defendant is convicted, then their cost that, they, that the defense incurred is imposed as a lien against that defendant. That's an automatic provision. It's not a negotiable provision. There is nothing in the statute that would allow us to negotiate some sort of alternate remedy. We, I still eh, have... Número dos, en, se, la previsión de la cual se está, eh, la, que, la cual estoy hablando, eh, provee, es una previsión diferida, que si el acusado se condena, entonces los costos de la defensa se ponen en un gravamen. Eh, eso es lo que esto estipula. What we would request is that at least seven days before the next hearing, that the defense provide the state attorney's office and JAC whatever new information they have, included any translated, translated documents from the Dominican Republic so that we can see them and review them because if that resolves our concerns, then we may, we may withdraw our request for further hearing on this matter. But that's as far as we can take it. Entonces, eh, nosotros podemos llegar al a, a punto de que por los próximos siete días que el equipo de defensa le provean a la fiscalía y a los equipos de JS y del tribunal cualquier información o cualquier documento traducido que podamos ver y revisar. Ver y revisar. Entonces, con es, en base a esto, podemos tomar una determinación. Mr. Barrow Yala, um, I'm going to ask you to go on ahead and meet the state attorney's office. If um, Jack... Mr. Lake uh, chooses not to participate in that meeting. That is up to them. Please make sure that they do have uh, the information that you are going to be relying upon. And uh, maybe we'll have to have on the 18th. Maybe we won't. But uh, if we do, I will see everybody back here on the 18th. Señora Rivero Ayala, lo que yo estipulo es que por favor le provea a los fiscales y al señor Lake, eh, el equipo de Jack de Abogados, que toda la información pertinente, la información en la cual usted está basando eh, todo esto y determinamos entonces si el señor Lake quiere participar o no, pues ya eso se lo dejo a, a la opción de él, pero eh, si determinamos que puede haber una audiencia el 18, eso lo determinaríamos entonces después. Of course, Judge, and I'll certainly send Mr. Lake um, the information and I'll send him the link to any kind of Zoom meeting we have and I'll present all the evidence then and, and hopefully we can move forward and uh, have a, a, a viable defense available to Ms. Ripley. Y claro que right. sí, su señoría, estoy de acuerdo. Cualquier reunión en, que tengamos por la plataforma Zoom, de cualquier tipo de pruebas, eh, yo tengo la esperanza de que podamos hacer esta defensa, una defensa viable para la señorita Ripley. All right, folks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Judge. Good, Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Muchísimas gracias Thank a todos. Judge, we're putting it off on 118 for Saturday. It'll be on for 18 for um, evidentiary hearing. Okay.
va a ser estipulado para el 18 para una audiencia para mostrar las pruebas.